there. I just wanted to record an intro clip for you guys for this footage you're about to see. It is Monday, November 27th, and this footage is about two weeks old. My apologies. Um, we left for vacation out shortly after this footage, and then we were thrown into the holiday week, and I needed to work through the weekend um, for Black Friday and Saturday, so I'm just now getting this vlog footage put together, and I wanted to First, thank you guys for continuing to support my channel and be sure to continue to give me thumbs up if you like the content that I'm putting out there. This is my favorite social media platform to you know, educate with you guys and just kind of be a part of this process with me. And so I really appreciate your support. And even though I'm not a daily vlogger, you guys continue to really enjoy the content that I'm putting out there. So thank you guys so much for your support. And I hope you guys enjoy this footage. It's a chest and try workout. I'm including some voiceovers as well as I'm going to experiment with that whole picture in a picture thing to discuss with you guys um, my shoulder BFR training that I included at the end of the chest and tricep workout. So I hope you guys enjoy the footage and bye-bye. Are you ready for the chase now? vacation and I have one more shift before it is my vacation and we're gonna be gone for a week so I'm probably gonna be getting lots of footage caught up on the vlog and doing some editing on vacation but today I am training chest and triceps and I'm super excited because I feel like you guys either get glutes or you get back and biceps um, and I feel like my entire Instagram feed is just back day. <laughs> so I'm like super excited to share some of my chest training with you guys again, because I used to be this bikini girl who trains chest and I feel like I haven't done that in a long time. Even though I really have, I just haven't got any footage for you guys. So we gonna go do this workout. See you guys in the clips. So what you're gonna see here is me properly warming up uh, before my chest and tricep day. Basically before this day, I had trained back and biceps. So my upper back, particularly my scapula and rhomboids was very, very tight and sore. And to prepare for my bench press day, I knew I needed to open up that area and as well help relieve some of the pain in the tissue that I had there. So you'll see me go through a series of movements here to showcase how you can foam roll out your back and here you'll see me basically trying to alleviate some tension in my triceps to loosen that area up and during muscle being used for the bench press so I want to make sure they're nice and warm and ready to go. This is part two of my warm up mobility work before my chest and tricep. Because your shoulder girdle is a secondary mover in the majority of your chest work, it's also very, very important to allow for an active warm up in your shoulder to target different areas in which you're going to be using for your chest movements. So I'd be sure to include some lateral raises. Here you'll see me doing some bent arm lateral raises and I go into some front raises just to get some full mobility in that shoulder girdle.
So I feel like this uh, particular superset does need some voiceovers to explain to you exactly what I'm doing here. So with the tricep superset, um, I really want the muscle to be active for a long period of time. So what you're seeing here is me doing the crossbody tricep extension on my left arm and I immediately go into the next movement, keeping the movement on my left arm. So I'm going to go into the kneeling tricep kickbacks. So what you're going to see is me just basically doing the same movement on both sides before moving on to the next side. And this is just a superset technique to increase your time under tension for the particular muscle you're working. Before going into this clip of my BFR training cycle for my shoulders, I wanted to talk with you a little bit about BFR training, otherwise known as occlusion training, which is restricting blood flow to the particular muscle being worked. And I'm going to show you exactly how I was able to start doing this with the particular equipment that I needed to purchase. So based on a recommendation from a great friend, I was able to buy my straps from Amazon. These are also called tourniquets and they are very inexpensive. So if you're looking on Amazon and you see some very expensive ones, especially for shoulders, you don't need one of the high priced ones. Maybe if you were gonna start BFR training with your quads, you may wanna invest in a thicker band because these bad boys aren't gonna cut it for working your quads. But again, I was just introduced to this methodology of training when I was preparing for my figure debut because I did need to pull the size of my shoulders up and as well as improve some imbalance in size of my shoulder caps. Um, I did have one that was completely noticeably lagging and this is a method to increase the anabolic performance of the muscle and com and increase the hypertrophy of the muscle. So when I first started this, I was only doing it on one side of the body to help bring up that particular side that was lagging. These are the tourniquets that I got from Amazon and how they are, how they basically go around your arm is they, they clip through here and you're able to kind of open it up and basically fit your arm through there and then tighten it up. So once you pull that tab, it's gonna tighten and then to quick release, you just press that little button here and it releases the tourniquet. So this series of movements, I started with a unique form of a lateral raise that I feel truly targets the rear delt as well as uses my tricep. So it's just a movement that I've created um, just because based on feel and function of the muscle. And then I go into a bent arm lateral raise, which is basically targeting my medial delts. And then again, to supplement my tricep workout, I did some overhead tricep extensions. So to, to sum up BFR training, it is not going to supplement heavy lifting. I do add it to the end of my training routines because I'm able to use a slightly less load because I am at this point fatigued in my muscle fibers. So it's a way to get some additional work through the tissue at a lighter load. Another benefit of occlusion training is that you are able to target the fast twitch muscle fibers just slightly better. So please take advantage of the research that's available to you online about BFR training. I know one of the great resources I found was on 
Lane Norton's website. Um, he wrote an entire blog about it as well as bodybuilding.com has an entire outline of the benefits to BFR training and exactly how to BFR train specific areas and how to put the tourniquets on. So be sure to check out those resources. I'll be sure to link those below in the description box. Mm. Cookie dough was so good. Just got done making my close workout. I had 30 grams of this stuff. I pretty much just ate off of it in little chunks. Yep. So that's really good. Had 30 grams of that. And then I made up an orange dream sickle protein, which was a special edition protein way back when with about time. Yes, I still had it because I save it because it's really good and I savor it. With 80 grams of banana and a cup of cashew milk. Mmm. So good. Oh, FYI, new red hot chili peppers playing in the background. It's so dope. All right. Now we're gonna get ready for our date at Lavino. And see you guys in the next clips. Bye bye. So we're heading off to Lavino. And I just have like cute little tea from Forever 21. And these boots are totally my mom's back when she was like 20 years old, maybe. They are. So cute, they're so worn, but I love them. Um, they are like a burgundy leather, I guess, maroon leather. And obviously I need to get some repair happen. But oh well. Oh, that's Beans, hi Beans. He's a cross-eyed kitty. I have my camel uh, lucky leather coat because it is chilly outside. And here's the current makeup. I did like um, more of like a maroon slash like orange eye and yeah so here we go still a little nasally still a little cold but i'm feeling better almost back to myself hopefully i'll feel better by sunday when we fly out to florida all right so let's go see what bae's wearing because he always looks cuter than me sometimes Hey, bye bye, what you wearing? Oh, this is my uh, Lulu black and my Lulu green. <laughs> so, yes, he does have his Lulu get up on. What are you doing? Trolling Facebooking. people on Facebook. <laughs> and I think he's already started with some of Odia. Uh, you just started. we leaving, buddy. Say bye bye. because Lovino wine wasn't enough. Carter House has got to stock up. So tell us what you're doing here. I'm trying to find a Lovino. Take a left. Yes! Okay. Yes! Eat the best. Don't hoard it all. I mean, I'm gonna take four. Four? <laughs> yes! <laughs> it's my favorite. 
That's what I do things. I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm all in with Evodia. All in. Okay. But you're, it's not like you're not going to get four beers. You're going to get more than four beers. But I'm not going to get the same four beers. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, we were going to look for that other Malbec from, that we just had. What was it called? Uh, Paul something? Do you guys have Paul something here? I'm, I'm a reverse. Was it, was, was it Spanish? Well, it was Argentinian. Nope. Palas? No. Palas? Is it actually like Paul? Like it was Paul. Paul was Molitor? The name, it was a guy who's very important. And his name was Pearl, and it was a Bramar. So Malbec, you might, I might have to get that. Where's Paul? I don't see Paul. I mean, it is kind of a weird name for a Malbec to be from Argentina and be named Paul. Here's Don Paula. Paul. There's a Paul involved in that. No. Paul. It said Bramar. <clears throat> oh my gosh, so many Malbecs. Like, I really like this one. That bottle. Paulucci. That's it. I like it. That's it. No, it's not it. Paul. <laughs> but it's not it. But I'm gonna get it. So I love wine. Hubby loves IPA. And I managed to find two of his favorite. This is from Against the Grain. And it's a Citra Beep Down. Double India Pale Ale. It's his fave. Are you happy? It's a very rare breed of IPAs. <laughs> and now we're checking in the cold section <laughs> to see if they have it there too. <coughs> they and they don't. Like, this is what literally <laughs> is the hole every time we come. But I randomly found two. Oh my gosh, where did you go? I, I can't control him here. It's, it's unreal. He's like the biggest beer connoisseur ever. And he's going deep in the depths to try to find this beer. Where are you gonna, what are you gonna find? It's not here. It's not here. What is this? Such fresh. Liqueur flavored waffles? No, waffles. Liqueur flavored like waffles? Where does it exist? Waffle flavored liqueur. Waffle flavored liqueur. What'd you find? What's that? Citra Fest. Just an imitation. It is. It's a session though. Wait, is that the one that smells like pine cones? Tastes like pine cones? No, uh, not this particular one. Are you one. sure that it looks may. like... It may. That's the one that looks like pine cones. This is not it because that's called actually Pine Fest. <laughs> pine Fest. <laughs> Alright, let's get it. Okay. Do you think we have enough? I think we're about to drop it down here. Okay. I think we have enough. This place is really overwhelming. Look at this. So overwhelming. I don't even know what to do.